Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make Your Loco channel. Uh, today we have a 2009 Ford F-150 uh, with a 543 valve in it, but it has around 287,000 miles on it, so it's got a lot of miles on it. Uh, but it runs good. It's probably had a timing job at some point in time. Uh, it has all new quail packs on there. You know, it's been maintained really well, and that's why it's gotten this far. Uh, but the customer has a, a, a misfire on number seven, and no one can diagnose it. Uh, he's had to do a couple shops around the area. Uh, the first one said, hey, we need to put on some uh, plugs and coils, make it all new, and that should take care of it. Didn't take care of it. And then another shop said that uh, number seven injector was sticking intermittently, causing the issue, replaced it, didn't fix anything. Then they said that the injector sticking backfed into the PCM, it's a classic uh, mechanic CYA, it backfed or shorted into the PCM and took out the PCM driver for that uh, particular uh, injector. Replaced the PCM, nothing. He brought it to another shop. They said uh, the, the cats were plugged up, causing back pressure, causing misfires, which does happen, uh, especially in this engine. They replaced it without even doing a full diagnosis, apparently. Replaced the all new cats, all new cat back exhaust system they put on there too. Guess what? Same problem. Guy reaches out to me, says, hey, can we, can you take a look at it? Um, so I said, sure, bring it on down. Number seven misfire was the key in my head already. I knew a roller follower had popped out. Why? Because I have a lot of experience with these engines. That's the first thing. Um, but I've seen it quite a bit recently. Uh, and every time it's been num number seven. Number seven. So an intake roller follower pops out and it sits there in the head. That's the best outcome you can ever have because if this thing starts jiggling around in there, starts getting in the way, the engine will destroy itself. So I'm, I'm thinking that's what, this, what, is what the situation is on this one too because of the mileage, uh, 09 and newer especially, had a lot of problems with roller followers failing in them. Uh, I'm not sure if they're original or not. And uh, just about everything else has been taken care of on there. So it's like, it's pretty obvious that we need to go into base engine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring you over to the scan tool, show you the few basic pre-checks that I do uh, for this kind of concern, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull the valve cover together and see if it truly is uh, for, or $8 now, a uh, roller follower that's causing all these concerns. I bet it is. Okay, so here are some results for my test drive. So I went for a test drive and I used the Ford power balance tool and I watched all the cylinders power contributions going down the road. And sure enough, intermittently, number seven, you can see the dropout right here. All the rest of the cylinders are A-OK. -okay. You know, all this all over the places from decelerations and stuff like that. Uh, but the deep V dropout is an actual misfire. And you can see it's not all the time. So you got to really work to get it to do it. Uh, decelerations, uh, stuff like that. It's not the usual um, upon acceleration misfire that's associated with the secondary ignition failure, okay? So you can see, yeah, it's there, okay? Um, so I wanted to show you guys that before I clear this out. That's my little test drive. So the first thing I do when I have a concern like this is I'll go to mode six data and I'll, I'll look for you know the history uh, that it records for the misfires and all the other data inside of there. So as you can see, it, it records specific misfire data for each one of the cylinders in here. So you go down the columns on, you have a min, max, and the actual value. So you look down, these are all the cylinders, 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 and they're all zero counts, and we get to number seven, and look at that. I mean, so it's random, but we're still racking up a good amount of misfire counts on there. It's pretty obvious we have a concern on number seven. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and pull codes, make sure there isn't anything weird going on with Rich or Lean. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Sure enough, you only have misfire codes. You know, these are all kind of random on here. And this one's specific right there. Okay, you can see they cleared the codes a couple times. Got a P1000 in there. Uh, okay, so we got number seven. This it's definitely recognizing it, and you know. So next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll do a relative compression with the scan tool too. All this stuff takes about five minutes and it really eliminates a lot of things that are going on here. Now this right here is the interesting part about it. Right here we're doing a relative compression with the scan tool and that'll basically uh, compare crankshaft acceleration um, 
com it, uh, it'll compare it to the other cylinders, and it's all relative to the other cylinders, relative compression. Uh, so it'll give you a basic uh, loss of compression on each one of the cylinders on here. And once it gets into the yellow or even the red, I guess, if they can go down that far, uh, it's a big concern. So anything below like, you know, 5, 10, 15%, you have a problem in that cylinder uh, with the base engine. So the interesting part about this is this will check base engine valves, can valve seats, do, do, do ring seat in the cylinder walls. Uh, is there a hole in the cylinder? You know, all that kind of stuff is what this actual actually checks. How well the cylinder seals. Well, if that roller follower popped out to the side and that valve just closed all the time, well, guess what? That valve's going to seal just fine. So that's why it's not showing up here on the relative compression. So you have to realize that too. You're looking at base engine at this point, but it looks good. You need to look further. Remember, there's, there's, there's two intakes... And there's one exhaust valve. So if one of the intakes flies off the handle, the cylinder will still work. Okay, so we'll have, it'll run smooth at idle and all other good stuff. Uh, we'll have good compression, all that stuff. But the incoming air into the cylinder that the PCM is calibrated for is not going to be there because one of the valves is not opening. Yeah, so of course we get a misfire because the fuel is basically running too rich on that cylinder. So I have everything pulled apart. Literally, I pulled out number seven coil and put it to the side just for the kicks, okay? Uh, but I haven't even checked number seven's uh, spark plug at all, okay? I went straight for pulling the valve car because I said, like I said, I've seen this too many times before. So we're going to prop you up on the side here and we're going to, do the reveal together and see if I'm right. All right, so this is probably the best angle we're gonna get here. Everything's unbolted, we're ready for the reveal on here. So hopefully I don't bump you. And we can see what's going on here together. Sucker's still hot. Can be tricky to get off. There we go. And of course, this is sticking and everything else. Yeah, my mama. Okay. So, I don't recall what it was last time. Uh, which intake follower was last time, uh, but here's cylinder one, or not cylinder one, this is cylinder five, this is cylinder six, and this is cylinder number seven right here, and of course number eight. Uh, so these followers are definitely original. They're not the latest and greatest small hole design, the small oiling hole on there. All these feel tight all the way along. Even the ones on seven here, okay? But as you can see, or you will be able to see, there it is. You see it right there? It's sitting right there. And that's the intake lobe. So intake, exhaust, intake on number seven. So, you know, usually this gives you a warning. Um, usually they start, you know, the bearings, they, they fail in here. Uh, so there's a lash, so you, you know, it's pretty much constant uh, because the lash is always there. So there is definitely a warning there, but if you have an exhaust leak like this guy does, um, you may mistake it and ignore it. You don't want to ignore it. But again, this is the way it usually is. It gets kicked up over to here or even down there, but usually over here because the rotation of the engine, and that's the best thing that can happen to it gets stuck up in there and out of the way okay we still need a full set of roller followers on here you can see this one's toast still spinning but look at the lash in there that's all it takes you have all that lash in there it gets loose there's nothing holding it in place and just flies out okay so this one i mean the, the cam's pretty chewed up on here so you probably need to replace the cam on here and stuff like that. 
honestly, if he hasn't had a timing job in how long, I'd replace that too. You know, do a timing job on here. Uh, but yeah, there it is. So because a lot of people are getting taken, uh, and because a lot of techs are misdiagnosing these, look at that now. See, the bearings are totally wiped in there. So at that point, it's just too much lash to hold it into place. This thing's been ticking for a while. So yeah, I just wanted to do a quick video on that uh, to show you guys what to look for, I guess, uh, if you have a hard to diagnose misfire on the 543 valve. Everything else checks out and you've done your checks for everything else um, and everything's good to go. You may want to look at the base engine on here, most notably the roller follower. Because, like I said, at idle and everything else, this thing runs great because it still has an intake and an exhaust follower in there. And that's what usually happens, always the intake follower. So only under certain conditions, it'll misfire uh, on you. So that's about it. I just want to show you guys this is really a thing out there. I've seen quite a few of these, and it's always been number seven intake for whatever reason. So... That's all for now. I hope this helped you guys fix your Ford yourself. See you guys next time.